Sirtuin, the longevity gene. These little genes can have a big impact on our endurance, on our heart, on our cognitive function, but more importantly, on how well we age. And there are things that we can do to energize these little genes and make them more effective. And that's the topic of today's video. This is Lance, and welcome back. I started this channel about three months ago to record what I've learned on my quest to turn back the clock on aging. If you've been finding these videos to be informative, if you've learned something that you didn't know, then leave me a comment below. And please, hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. And while you're at it, you might as well hit the like button as well. There's been a lot of talk in the media lately about sirtuins, NAD and resveratrol, and the impact that they have on the aging process. In today's video, we're going to take a look at, at what sirtuins are and how they affect aging, the impact that NAD has on sirtuins, and how supplementing with NAD precursors and resveratrol influence the effectiveness of sirtuins. So in an earlier video, I mentioned that even though there are some anti-aging therapies and interventions that are still a year or two away, there are some things that you can do right now to slow down the aging process. And one of those things is to boost the sirtuin pathway. Now, it's been known for a long time now that calorie restriction, a reduction in the intake of food, will slow aging in many species. And by calorie restriction, I'm talking about a reduction in food intake beyond what is normal or even comfortable. And it's something that is probably not very sustainable for very long. But research has revealed some of the molecules that are responsible for the slowing of the aging process. And many of these molecules interact with the sirtuins. Sirtuins are a class of seven different proteins that play a critical role in regulating cellular health. They're actually genes and they're nicknamed the longevity genes because they regulate so many functions that influence the aging process. They regulate mitochondrial biogenesis or the creation of new mitochondria. They stimulate apoptosis or the programmed death of cells and autophagy, which is the recycling of cellular material. They inhibit inflammation. They stimulate signaling between the nucleus and the mitochondria on the cellular level and between the hypothalamus and fat tissue on the systemic level. And three of the sirtuins actually repair damaged DNA. And sirtuins can only function in the presence of NAD+. Now, NAD stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, and it's a derivative of nicotinic acid, better known as niacin, or vitamin B6. And it comes in two forms, NAD+, and NADH. It's a coenzyme that helps turn nutrients into energy, and it plays an essential role in the energy production in the mitochondria. Now, it's also a helper molecule for proteins that regulate other biological activity. And NAD is absolutely vital to the normal function of sirtuins. They can only function in the presence of NAD+. But it's also used by DNA-repairing proteins called PARPs. And more PARPs can be found in aged subjects. Now, although it's necessary to activate many NAD-dependent molecules, such as sirtuins and PARPs, too much activation can exhaust NAD uh, plus supplies and can induce cell death if the damage to the cell is too severe. Too much activation of the PARP enzyme can also induce overexpression of the protein P53. Now this protein is responsible for the elimination of cancer cells, but the more it gets activated or expressed, the more it accelerates the aging process. So. As we age, NAD plus levels go into decline and the sirtuins become less functional as a result. As NAD plus levels decline, energy transfer decreases, slowing mitochondrial function and increasing oxidative stress. This results in chronic inflammation, cognitive dysfunction, and an increase in free radicals, which damage DNA. You know, 
I'm well aware that some of this stuff is really technical or complicated and that I may not explain it in the most logical way. So if you have any questions or remarks or comments, if you'd like to make any suggestions on how I could present it better, I'd love to hear them. Just put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond. So how do you reverse this decline in NAD plus levels? Well, one way is by supplementing with NAD precursors. Studies have shown that taking an NAD precursor can elevate NAD plus levels by as much as 60%. Now, there are several NAD uh, there are several precursors to NAD with varying levels of absorption and effectiveness. And two of the most effective are NMN or nicotinamide mononucleotide and NR, which stands for nicotinamide riboside. Now there's a lot of debate between which is the most effective, which passes through the cell membrane easier. And the jury still seems to be out on that. However, in numerous studies on both substances, NMN seems to be edging out NR in terms of results. Now, I'll be doing a video in the future on nicotinamide mononucleotide versus nicotinamide riboside. But for now, know that NMN has proven to have superior results in endurance, heart disease, Alzheimer's, aging, DNA repair, uh, weight, neurological function, energy, and believe it or not, vision. However, there's a couple of caveats to supplementing with an NAD precursor. And the first has to do with dosing and cost. Now, typically, both NMN and NR come in doses of 250 to 300 milligrams per day. But most researchers who take NMN themselves recommend a gram per day. That's 1,000 milligrams. And I read articles on NR that suggest a daily dose of 500 to 1,000 milligrams. And taking a gram a day of NMN can run you between $150 and $200 a month. That's kind of pricey. Now, I'm currently taking about 600 milligrams a day of NR, and it costs me about $80 per month. So, buyer beware. And there's a second caveat to taking NR, NMN, or any form or derivative of niacin. The RDA, the recommended daily allowance, for any form of the vitamin B6 is 16 milligrams per day, with an upper limit of about 35 milligrams per day. Taking any form of niacin in excess of 35 milligrams per day, and this includes niacin, niacinamide, nicotinamide, nicotinamide riboside, nicotinamide mononucleotide, all forms of niacin consume methyl groups in order to be properly excreted in the urine. The lack of methylated niacin metabolites in the urine is a sign of niacin deficiency, and methyl groups are important to a lot of biological functions. They're used in the synthesis of creatine, of choline and of neurotransmitters. So if you're taking one gram per day of NMN or NR, that's in excess of 60 times the recommended daily allowance. So if you're going to be supplementing with NR or NMN, then you need to be including at least a one-to-one -one ratio of trimethylglycine. Now trimethylglycine or TMG usually comes in 500 milligram doses. So if you're taking a gram of NMN or NR per day, you should also be taking a gram of TMG or two caps, it's about two doses. Another thing that you can do is to accelerate your production of sirtuins. And one way to do that is to take resveratrol. Resveratrol is a polyphenol like quercetin, and it's found primarily in red wine, grape skins, blueberries, cranberries, and even in dark chocolate. Resveratrol boosts the activity of sirtuins by elevating the mitochondrial function in a way that's very similar to calorie restriction. So supplementing with resveratrol has been demonstrated in labs to extend lifespans. But perhaps a better choice would be to supplement with terostilbene, which is a chemical cousin of resveratrol. Terostilbene occurs in the same types of plants as resveratrol, but in much smaller amounts. Both resveratrol and terostilbene are strong anti-inflammatories, both show activity against cancer cells, and both are powerful antioxidants. But in cell cultures and animal studies, terostilbene often performs better than resveratrol, and it's far more bioavailable than resveratrol, about 20 times as much as absorbed by the body, and it lasts in the body about seven times longer than resveratrol. So terostilbene might be a better choice when it comes to choosing your supplements. Okay, to recap, 
We've taken a look at sirtuin and the role that they play in slowing down the aging process. We've discussed the importance of NAD plus to the activation of sirtuins and how NAD plus supplies can become exhausted by overactivation of the PARPs, resulting in declining NAD levels as we age. But we've also talked about how supplementing with NAD precursors such as NR and NMN and resveratrol or carostilbene can restore NAD levels and boost the production of sirtuins. Now, I've put links to the first two videos in this series in the description below. And as I post the rest of the videos in this series, I'll put links to those as well. If you enjoyed this video or you found it informative, then please hit the subscribe button below. Leave a comment and tell me what you think about this video on sirtuins and NAD. Hit the like button, share it with your friends and on your social media, and click the bell to be notified when I post a new video every Tuesday. And as always, thank you so much for watching.